Hi good people, welcome back to my channel. I say it this year is all about consistency. Welcome back to another segment of the way I say it. And today I'm going straight to the point. I'm talking about the controversial story that has been making rounds in the mainstream and social media streets about the former CS for Interior, uh, Fred Matiani, uh, and the attacks that have been going on around his house. Uh, you know, I know a couple of days ago, uh, it was just like about a week ago, um, the former CS of Interior actually said that uh, some people had gone and he was uh, uh, saying that those were police had gone to his house, so he was anticipating an arrest. There was a lot of noise and unsurety happening in the social media. The National Police Service came out, uh, you know, vehemently just denying that they, they had gone to Dr. Fred Matiangi's home. And even the CAD, the DCI, who have a very nice social media team, also came out uh, very quick to, to, to refuse uh, to take responsibility for having raided um, the former interior CS. Now, I want to remind you, even before all this started happening, you need to get to the root cause of what is going on. And uh, so I'll keep reminding you that what's going on is the bigger picture. Uh, the head of opposition, Raila Odinga, has realized that if he doesn't have his people in the IABC, and this is some, he has, he needs to have like three commissioners or four commissioners from his side in the IABC. And when he realized that, he started attacking because he was quiet, because there was no issue of concern before. And now, uh, with that, the politics have started playing out. And when the politics start to play out, government versus opposition comes full swing. And when that starts happening, you'll start hearing and seeing a lot of things in the media. Rule number one, never trust a politician. The moment they open their mouth to talk, 90% of the times they're lying. Actually, it could be even 99% of the times they're lying. They're managing their public image. So you never trust any politician. It doesn't matter what your political affiliation is. Dr. Fred Matiagi rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And I, I tend to feel like right now he's getting a taste of his own medicine. Uh, the first thing President Ruto did when he came to power, he prevented some of the cabinet secretaries and principal secretaries uh, from traveling outside of Kenya. He made sure to prevent them from being able to travel out of Kenya and without his permission. And it's because uh, some people say quietly that the current uh, number one is a very vengeful man. And uh, the thing is, he doesn't come for you directly. He'll come from you for you from underground. And he has his own ways of sorting out people who disobey his orders. And I know as I'm speaking, some people may... May, may start labeling me to be a part of a particular group. No, no, no. I'm not a part of any political affiliation. Neither do I desire to be involved in this politics. I'm only speaking as a Kenyan. And uh, speaking as a Kenyan because what's happening in this country is quite concerning. A former minister, minister of interior is claiming that some officers went to his house. And nobody will take responsibility for this. And one of the things that I wonder about... During the campaign time, uh, President Ruto assured us as Kenyans that he wants to stop the issue of misusing the police to advance political agenda. Of course, any government in power will always use the police to advance their own political agenda. And this has, it's, not, it's not a Kenyan problem, it's a global problem. So it is alleged, uh, according to the reports that are there in the media, that C.S. Matiangi was lying. He, he blew a false trumpet, the first thing that he said, that, uh, that uh, his home was raided. Is that a possibility? Yes, it could be a possibility. Remember, the, Matiangi was very quiet since the time he finished uh, uh, his term and he handed over his office. And I, I tend to feel like secretly I know that Matiangi might be working for the United Nations, I think. And uh, we, when you're working for such organization, there's a required code of conduct in which it excludes you from a lot of political involvement. But these people need their attention. And Matiangi is not done. If you're there sitting thinking, we are done with Matiangi, this is not the last you've seen of Matiangi. Matiangi is a very big political threat in the upcoming elections. So 
the current government does not want to give him power and they want to try and threaten him and pull him in his shell. And could it be possible that the government really visited Matiani's home? Of course, anybody with a brain knows they did. They really did visit. There is no way Matiani can just wake up and say, oh, uh, these people came to my house. But what I'm concerned about is not that the police went to his house. But what were they looking for in his house? Is it possible that this Ruaraka land case is just a hot wind? They don't even have evidence because when you see the government attacking, they're attacking because of a bigger reason, something that they can use to bring you down. So what is it that they're looking for in Dr. Matiangi's house? So why did they deny the first time? Maybe they deny it intentionally so that the second time they can now have a right to go in and say we want to investigate who was coming to Dr. Matiangi's home. And now yesterday we were treated to proper drama when the police went back to Dr. Matiangi's house. They broke the gate, they arrested the gatekeeper for one hour and they entered inside without the presence of Dr. Matiangi and also without the presence of his lawyers. They entered into his house. How do you get into somebody's house? Like now, I can imagine somebody coming to my house, searching my house and taking any evidence. That evidence cannot be presented in the court of law. Let me tell you. Unless it's private information you're looking at so you can use it to blackmail someone. It's not admissible in the court. In the court of law, for anything to be admissible, nobody can incriminate themselves. Unless Matiangi is there to say, this is really my sofa set and it had weed, you know. Then, if you're searching somebody's house and they are not there, there is nothing you can use in court. So why are you going there anyway? What are you looking for that you know, you already know? Because the law enforcement agencies already know that they can't use such evidence in court. So why? The big question is why? That is the mystery. What are they searching for in Dr. Matiangi's home? I know you all remember that when Professor Magoha died, President Uhuru King, the former president, Uru Kenyatta asked Matiangi to chair the barrio committee and they organized the barrio. And President Ruto could not even be able to go to that barrio. And after that barrio, if you remember, Baba and Uhuru went on a rally in Kisumu. And they went and they spoke to people and Uhuru was clear that he has not retired and his party leader, leader is Honorable Raila Odinga. And that was a political start. Again, everything is coming from the fact that these guys are advocating for something. In politics, it's a man-eat-man -man society. If you don't have something to blackmail someone else, you not get what you need. So when you see all these things happening, the drama from government, the drama from opposition, all this is just a facade. It's a show that they're they are putting over. But what should we expect to see next? Is Matiangi really going to be arrested? I believe in the near future, he will be arrested. These guys are trying to set that guy up. He touched so many people he rubbed them the wrong way. He abused power. There are some people, including some people in the opposition that I had speaking somewhere, uh, some senators and some governors, they, they, they were really affected by the actions of the former CS as a CS for interior. They were affected by his actions and what he did and how he disobeyed court orders, even on the Mikuna Mikuna case, which is a, public, a case in the public eye and others. And now they're giving him a taste of his own medicine. First, they are going to, you know, treat him like, you know, the way you treat a rat, you know, hide and seek, hide and seek. And then finally, they're going to capture him and take him in there. And they're going to try and do what Uhuru Kenyatta did to Mike Mbubi Sonko. That's what they're going to try to do. To kill any opportunity for Matiangi to ever have a political future in this country. That's how politicians work. Unfortunately, if it comes to Kenya, the best mentee of our late president, Daniel Arab Moy, was the current president. Honorable William Samoy Ruto, His Excellency, is the smartest politician in Kenya. He will know how to bring anyone he wants to bring down. So Matiangi should get ready, and I think he's anticipating. Why would anyone hire 200 lawyers? if they don't know that there is something they've done wrong. If you've done nothing wrong, why would you have 200 lawyers? I was also boggled, it boggled my mind to think that there were 200 lawyers in the compound 
when the fo the police are at you know, when we're being told the police first went to Matiangi's house, there was like two hundred lawyers there in the compound, and none of them went live on social media. And you know the way these lawyers are, and even recorded a clip or an audio of that uh, altercation. So there is no evidence, including all the media houses that went to cover. There is no evidence that the police went to Matiangi's house the first time. I know what happened, I'll tell you, and this is just like an assumption from my side. I think Matiangi knows that he's being investigated. He knows that it's just a matter of time that he'll be arrested. And maybe he was given false intelligence, information that these guys are coming for him. And in readiness for that, or in anticipation for that, what he did is he blew the alarm to his friends, and his friends blew the information to the media. And when they put the information in the media, they made sure it's not Matiangi, because, you know, Matiangi could be sued for, you know, um, lying that some people came to his house. It's not him who put... The, there's no evidence that Matiangi said anything. He didn't go to address the press and say that his home was attacked or anything like that. So, basically, he's a very smart man, but I feel for him. I feel that something big is coming to him. And I feel like people are ready to let some people go. Uh, that's the current government. But I feel like they're not ready to let this guy go. And I think in his wisdom, I, I think some words that he spoke just before Professor Magoha's burial could have been a trigger. Maybe people just wanted to let him lie low, but now both sides of the political design, divide will take advantage of this situation with him and try to get political mileage. You've seen uh, His Excellency Ray Odinga was the first one to go to Matiangi's house. And the funny thing is, you're in my house and you're talking on my behalf and saying people came to my house. And then journalists are asking you, um, so have you spoken to Matiangi? Then you're saying no. I'll speak to him after this. It doesn't make sense. You're in my house. You're confirming that what, you, what you've seen happened. And then now you're saying you've not spoken to the CS. Of course you've spoken to him. What is this that you're hiding? Maybe you know that he's being implicated in a case where there's evidence or something like that. Politicians will only tell you what they want you to know. And they'll only tell you what gives you political mileage. So as at now, how does the Matiangi saga benefit anybody politically? First, it's, 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 it works to the detriment of the current president. It's showing that he's not, you know, who, what, he's not doing what he said. That he's protecting the extortion of human beings and Kenyans by the police. So that that's what the image of Ruto they're trying to paint. And they're also trying to get public sympathy so that when they call for these meetings for IEBC and all these prayers. Since when did Raila Odinga ever call for a prayer meeting? You think that's, uh, he, they, you know, I, I was laughing yesterday when I was watching the news and I saw he's calling for a prayer meeting next week at Jivanji Gardens. And also they're going to go to outside IBC offices. And they're saying those are public offices. Of course, that's a cause for violence and all these things will happen. This week, you're going to be in Kisi on Friday. On Saturday, we're going to be in Kisumu. And then, we'll also be doing a prayer a prayer for the IBC that we have and get an IBC which will defend the right of our people but I know I'm a big supporter of Raila Odinga right now because Kenya needs a strong opposition and if Kenya does not have a strong opposition the citizens of the country will be milked dry the hustler fund that we waited for we got it but people got 500 shillings, 700 shillings. What are the success stories we've had with that? And uh, what is the repayment? Have we been given an account of where these savings that every Kenyan is making is going? So you find there's a lot of loopholes always in politics. And people don't want to talk about this because obviously they're afraid. But sometimes we have to speak about these things. So see things in another perspective. So... Yeah, both sides could be playing games. It's very hard to know which side is right. But one thing is clear from the Matiangi story. The, these guys are coming after Matiangi. They're not going to leave him alone. Call me back when this happens. Or come back here and comment on this video after his arrest is finally effected. Because they will arrest him. And you should not even be shocked to see him 
arraigned in the International Criminal Court for various offenses. And uh, some of the other people that should watch out uh, include PS, former PS for Interior, Mr. Karanja Kibisho. He should watch out and uh, former C CS for ICT. I know those ones who are very lethal. And uh, they should watch out because any time this government could come for them. Uh, there's so many other things happening, but uh, I'll come back to you on another video to just comment and react to another of you know the trending topics in politics and other things in my segment of the way i see it remember this is my personal opinion so you're free to have your opinion give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you like the kind of content that i'm making and i hope to see you in the next video shortly